Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. Hello and welcome to Bowtie Life, where we talk mostly about gardening, sometimes about life. And we are out here in the raised beds, the colorful raised beds, the Joseph beds. And I'm Bowtie Dave, and we are here about to uh, address a situation of some super sweet 100 uh, tomatoes. Now these were grown out on April 26th. This is June, uh, I believe today is the 6th of June, or no, I'm sorry, 7th of June. And uh, so that means these guys are about six weeks old and they've been hardened off. Uh, be sure to watch the videos on hardening off uh, your plants. It's very important. They've actually been outside for about three weeks now, maybe even four weeks. I'm not, sh I can't remember exactly, but uh, I'll link up here in the corner of the video um, in the cards. If you're on a device that gets the little cards up in the corner here, <clears throat> um, I'm sorry, I think it's this corner up here, <laughs> but, uh, Anyway, uh, uh, to the video where we uh, planted these and where I had forgotten about these. Uh, I actually forgot about these and they got a, a, they grew in a little further than I was hoping. I, I, or well, I was not that I was hoping. I could have gotten these in the ground. You notice um, they have all kinds of true leaves on here. There's, there's a first set of leaves. In fact, here's one. At the bottom of at the beginning it grows these cotyledon leaves you see how that's just a just a very simple leaf and then it starts getting into these more complex leaves um, but there's two cotyledon leaves that come off of every tomato plant and those leaves are actually built into the seed and it creates just enough energy to get it going and get it to grow and so um, this guy here, as soon as it starts getting true leaves, you can plant it out. I like to get mine a little bigger because uh, things like slugs and other pests, I, I want to get uh, a little bit higher, get these leaves a little higher so that they can survive. It's one of the reasons why when you go to the, the and see the bonnie plants, seedlings that you see all over the place, uh, they'll typically get a little taller as well. And so, um, yeah, these, these are like so ready to go out and uh, I got five of them here and I take uh, kind of oh there's a little bit of grass right there I'm gonna pull that out but kind of squish the the little pot around this is a solo cup obviously but look at this this is ideal that you could not get better than that right there you see the the, the roots if I can be turning like this so you can see them uh, you see all the roots that are down here and they're just getting to the bottom of the cup. They're, they're holding the soil together. Uh, this thing is right at the peak of ready to go in the ground. And so uh, I did, up, I started in those little seed starting tray and then I up potted it once. But yeah, this guy is ready to go uh, in the ground and that's what I want to do now. Um, uh, a little bit about how tomatoes work. Now this is uh, unique to tomatoes and a few other nightshades, uh, not pepper plants. There's a, I did an experiment on growing roots along pepper plants. They don't grow roots like tomatoes do, uh, but uh, there's little hairs along here. Now I don't think that the little hairs themselves turn into roots. I think that's more of a defense mechanism, but um, the roots do come out of here. If this is buried up to say here, yeah, that much. Uh, and it's probably what's going to happen and what you do, you just simply take and pinch off these lower leaves. I know I'm going to go up to here. Um, and there's another, uh, leaf right there. I'm going to take that off. I know I want to go at least to somewhere in here, but also when I plant it, I don't want these things dragging the ground because that's like a, I don't know, a super highway for bugs and disease to get up out of the soil onto your plant. So we don't really want to do that. So yeah, this guy is so ready. It's aching. I mean, it is seriously aching to get into the ground. And so, and 
yeah, there's all kinds of nice tools to have. There's a hoary hoary, I have one. There's little spades and little trowels and little augers and all kinds of stuff. And if you've got the wherewithal to get that, go for it. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a bad thing. It's not gonna mess things up. Uh, there's, there's more than way, one way to do things, as we all know. And uh, you know anyone who's telling you this is the only way to do this, um, I really appreciated uh, the short that uh, um, Gardener Scott did recently. I think it may have come out today, but uh, he's talking about how, no, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't, it was Haas Tools. Um, he was talking about how um, he visited a garden and he was talking about how they were doing a lot of things wrong for his area, that area. And you could tell it was stuff that people had did in completely different parts of the world, but it was just not working for them. And so you really have to kind of study around the different ways to do things and find out what is your best way to do things. And so uh, one, there are a few things that, that are universal. The size of this plant, this is pretty universal. Those roots are perfect. I mean, perfect to go into the ground. Um, I have good soil here. I have a trellis here uh, that's pretty close to the ground and ready to take on tomatoes. I have an ivy right here that's trying to climb up. We're going to uh, interrupt that process. I don't know what that is. I do not want that mixing in with my tomato, young tomato plant. So I do like, I do uh, come out here and remove weeds. Uh, believe it or not, I do. Um, a lot of weeds in the garden, of course, and I don't, you know, it's not a big deal. I don't make a big deal out of it. I come out and, and I, yes, I walk into my garden most days and as I'm walking along, I'm pulling weeds as I go. And uh, occasionally I'll take a day and pull weeds in a certain area that's particularly bad. But it's not a hard task to do, it really isn't. And, and it really gets your hands in the soil and kind of gets that uh, biome, the very healthy biome uh, that keeps us alive, uh, just mixed in with your system. But uh, anyway, so there's a tomato plant over here that's kind of leaning towards, I've got to take care of that. But this trellis, uh, it had, what did it have on it last year? It had beans on this side. It had uh, Kajari melons on the other side last year. But I'm gonna just come in here with my hand and you see my hand it's about the same depth as that that root ball and yeah stuff's falling off but you come in here as deep as your hand maybe a little deeper and just pull back some of that soil now i do have uh i do have uh, a lot of mulch on here wood chip mulch and uh, we we live amidst four air bases, a couple of airports and a heliport. So there's a lot of air traffic around here, <laughs> but um, I'm going to, I'm reaching down pretty far in here and I'm going to put this plant, let me turn the camera down so you can see it. So I put this plant pretty far down in here. I've got, I should have pulled back the mulch first. I forgot to do that, but I do have a lot of the soil on top here and I'm just going to fill in, kind of pack in so there's no overly exhaustive uh, air pockets in there and put some mulch around it and now you can see this branch that I was oh there's a worm where'd he go that means health right there this place is healthy when you see worms he's trying to get back to the soil now this one here is trying to get into is pretty close and I know I'll eventually be picking these bottom two these uh, bottom two branches this one here is definitely on the soil so as I was saying earlier, just pinch that off so it's not touching the soil. This is, this will be a, insects will climb up that and you just don't want that. This thing is gonna take off growing though. You will see a difference in that in just days. And there's new stuff coming here. Uh, it's, it's ready to go. Now this is, like I said, a super sweet 100. Uh, it is an indeterminate tomato. There's two kinds of tomatoes. There are determinate tomatoes and indeterminate tomatoes and uh, they they grow a little differently a determinate tomato grows so big in fact if you look over here at this uh, Nebraska wedding uh, tomato 
this guy is not going to grow very much bigger than that because it is a determinate tomato and it's it's uh it's not quite full grown but it's pretty darn close uh, this is a small tomato cage on here. I think it's maybe a three foot plant, uh, which it's about what it is. Uh, and the, so the determinate plant will grow so high for so long, give its fruit, and then it will uh, die. It's gonna, it's gonna be done with. Um, what am I seeing that's orange over here? I see something in the can. Oh, sorry, that's part of my <laughs> camera program. I thought I had one of these ready but it will die. That's a determinate tomato. It has a determined life, a term, determined size, almost a determined crop. But an indeterminate, which is what this Super Sweet 100 is, an indeterminate will grow until the weather takes it. Which means I've had these things grow over 20 feet tall. Uh, this thing is, is gonna grow up this trellis and I'm gonna be tying it on occasionally just to give it direction. But it's gonna grow and grow and grow until uh, next winter when something gets it, either either disease or insects or uh, a freeze or whatever. Something will get it in here in Destin, Florida. Uh, it will probably get it sometime around or after Christmas. But, uh, you know, I've had, I've had these things last a long time, last till after Christmas, in fact, on sometimes. But anyway, so yeah, that's done. That's ready to go. I will water this in, uh, which just means I take the, the, the hose and give it a little bit of water. What that does is it, it makes that soil wash down around the, uh, the roots and make sure that it's in good contact so it can get all the nutrients it needs. But uh, let's go ahead and do up one more here. Now, another thing that's gonna happen with these, um, I will be training these on either one or two liters. That means this main stem right here, that is going to be the main growing stem. And you can see there's there's branches coming off here eventually off of this will come a little section where the tomatoes themselves will grow and uh but you if you look in the middle here there's a, there's something growing right here in the middle of this is called a crotch uh or the the armpit or whatever this is called a sucker and on indeterminate plants if you're doing a single leader this is actually another leader trying to come out so you kind of keep an eye on that if you're grow, if you want to grow it that way, and that's not the only way to do it. I know some people will grow their indeterminates six, eight foot high and then top them. And when you top them, that actually promotes the growth of these other little tiny things in between here, and it grows a different way. Uh, but it will continue to grow for a very long time. So anyway, this guy here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pinch off a few of these bottom branches uh, based on that one I just planted. I know I'm gonna wanna take these two off. And you see, there's not much left here, and that's okay. In fact, I could take these two off if I needed to and just leave this little fluff on top and it will grow. It's, it's amazing. These th tomatoes are resilient. So I've got this here. I'm gonna come over just a, a foot or so. Ooh, look at that. There's a seed on a plant right there. Almost looks like a palm starting. Uh, it feels like a palm starting too. I'm not sure. Oh, and so I do have labels and I'm going to be sure and put labels on these so I know what they are. But same thing. Just squeeze the cup a little bit and it'll be the same way. This was planted at the same time as that last one. You can see the roots look beautiful. This thing is ready to go, ready to rock. It's a little bit of grass right there. We'll go ahead and get rid of that. And come over here, do the same exact thing. Now I feel down there, there's a piece of cardboard that was easy just to poke my finger through. And you can watch some of my other videos to see uh, why there's cardboard down there. But it's really a simple process. You know, one of the biggest things to realize is that when you're doing this, really, it's just getting started. Do it a few times, grow it for a season, watch it grow. These things are gonna grow. Be sure and check out the garden tours that we do every at the end of every month and uh, see how this grows. This will be on the third part uh, of each month. 
where I do these raised, bed, raised garden bed tours. Now this guy is kind of hanging over a little bit. It's got turned a little bit. You can actually take and plant it at an angle to straighten it up. You don't have to be subject to that. You can plant at an angle so this thing will start growing upwards and that's okay. Look at those roots. That's a little bit more, just a scooch more root than I like to do optimally, but that is so ready to go. It doesn't matter. It truly doesn't matter. Look at that. It is just reaching out for earth and saying, where is my next food coming, next uh, meal coming from? And you know, I tease those out sometimes. Sometimes I don't. Uh, I did a short the other day on my pepidus, which are actually right behind the camera here. And big old root bound, I didn't touch them. I just stuck them in the ground because I was kind of in a hurry that day. But here we go, just the same thing. And I'm putting it in just like this. Now I will be using string to tie these up to the trellis and I'll do that in another video, but uh, they really don't need it right now. They just need to start growing. If I turn the camera around to the other side here, which is where these other two will go. You can see here, here's the same thing. Oh, this one actually has both cotyledon leaves on it. They actually will die and drop off on their own. And you can leave them, you can pinch them off. It truly does not matter. It knows how to take care of itself. So I stuck that label over there on that last one I planted. Now these root balls are a little drier. I, I, I actually put these over here yesterday and they didn't get the water this morning. So these are a little bit drier than I like to let them get, but it's okay. They did get watered yesterday morning. And we are very humid here in Destin, Florida. Now I've got some onions down over here, so I'm gonna come in a little bit. Oh. Now, this is a different one, a little bit different situation. And I'm glad I have this because you can see that right here, this main leader splits into two. And this is one of the reasons I like, um, this is one of the things I'll look for is when the plant is naturally splitting two. Now this isn't uh, something growing out of an armpit of another thing. It is truly a split. There's leaves on both sides couple of weeds in there, has a cotyledon leaf down here, but this thing is splitting into two. So this is going to be two plants. Now the root system can support, not two plants, but two leaders. Uh, this root system can support two leaders and uh, they will both grow just the same. Um, but sometimes nature does this. It'll just create a, a plant that's ready, ready and rock. Oh, this one had, did have both cotyledon leaves, uh, but ready and rocking to go. So again, I'm gonna pick off all these lower leaves. It looks like it could even be trying to do a third one here, I don't know. I'm gonna cut, pick these off so you can actually see this double leader better. And this is a legitimate, this plant said, I'm going two, two leaders, I'm doing it. So there's a natural two leaders. And, I look for that. I'll look for that on the other tomatoes and most of them will actually do that. Not most of them. So a lot of them will actually do that. Uh, I don't know if it's half or what, but uh, keep an eye on the garden tour. See how this thing grows. 
it's going to be the uh, middle one uh, right here. If I, if I have to find one more. I, I was looking through my seedlings. I could only find five. But this is kind of, in my garden, this is what I'm looking for right here. You can still do single liter. In fact, if you still really want to do just a one liter, you can pick one of these off just fine. In fact, I would, I would do it with scissors or uh, some pruners. But this thing will go. This thing will grow. This thing will produce. And uh, some say that this will produce twice as much. So uh, it, it really comes down to experimenting in your garden and the nutrients that you have, uh, how well does do things grow and uh, find out. And it's, it's kind of the thing I love doing in the garden is finding out these things. But anyway, I guarantee these roots are gonna be good. Oop, I gotta get that label in there. I normally do remember labels. Very seldom do I forget them, but they don't last very long. Long enough that I can remember, okay, this is what this is, and I can, I can go from there. Eventually, well, re repetition, I can get most things. But, now, if you look at the bottom here, it's just barely starting to grow out. That is like so perfect. Oh, yeah. Here we go. A little bit of root around the bottom. Um, I know people that tease those roots. I know people that don't. Both are fine. Both work. Uh, you're not going to kill a tomato by teasing or not teasing out a root. Come down here a little bit. Now this already has the two liters, so I'm going to go ahead and put this, um, well, I'm going to put it right here. The leader's going that way, ready to go up two different, uh, or two different uh, verticals on this trellis. So anyway, label. I got a video about why labels are important. It's not just for your memory. It's for that time when you have something really good that just rocks your world you know what it is so you can reproduce it. So anyway, that's really it. I just wanted to share a little bit, just a few minutes and, and, and this video uh, is real time. I didn't speed up anything. I didn't, uh, um, I didn't cut anything out. This is kind of a one take thing so that uh, it didn't take but a few minutes. Let me see how far am I into this video. Um, I can't see it right now. Uh, 22 minutes into this video. So uh, it, it doesn't take long. And if I had just gotten out here and do it, I could have done it in five minutes and not talked, you know, so. But I, wanted you, I want you to be able to come along and, and share. I wanted to be able, this is actually my own journal of how things are going in the garden when I do things. And so this is very important to me because I go back and I look at these things and, and um, uh, remind myself of stuff. I did the Pepidou thing. Uh, just yesterday, the remember the pepidus. Oh my goodness, I had forgotten them. And so I hurried up and got those in the ground. Five minutes. That was it. And so little tasks, especially if you're working at home, just taking a quick break outside. I love it. Uh, coming out here, I'm under a 50% shade cloth right now. Uh, so far, these tomatoes are just loving the shade cloth out here. We are, we have a pretty straight up sun. It's, it's like really short shadows in the in the high of the day and uh, so I started using this shade cloth this year so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how it does very much so anyway uh, as I said in the beginning uh, if you just stumbling on finding us please subscribe don't miss the results on these tomatoes see how they grow uh, if you have subscribed you're just watching another video thank you so much every time every subscription every watch helps grow the community uh, and this grows, this community grows the overall community of all the YouTube channels out there. And it's so very important to, that we can teach and learn and, and continue to grow. Uh, please click the thumbs up on this video if you thought it was informational, educational, or inspirational. Uh, and, uh, or if you just thought it was entertaining for that matter. But, uh, and share it on your social media with your friends who might also like to learn how to garden and, and do stuff like this. So... 
Um, all that being said, I'm going to sign off here and harvest some uh, goji berries here and uh, continue on with my work. So have a blessed day.